Hey, I'm James of TVS Pro. This is a very exciting video on the Mavic 2. We've got the Pro and the Zoom, had them for a few days. We've been able to get some footage and I am excited to talk to you about these few different videos that we're going to do. So of our Mavic 2 series, this one that you are watching is the Mavic 2 Full Instruction. And if you have bought the Zoom or the Pro, I don't know which one's which, I did that correct, then what you learn here is going to be identical on both platforms, it won't matter. If there is a feature or something on one that is not available on the other, then I will specify, but both will work. Uh, there will be another video of a Pro versus a Zoom, kind of what you should buy and uh, really primarily focusing on the camera capabilities between those two because they are very different, the Pro being far more capable than the Zoom. And the third, I uh, feel rather than comparing the Mavic 2s to the Mavic 1, I want to compare the Pro to the Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, because of the one inch sensor, I feel that those are better represented to compare to each other. So without any further ado, let's get started. This is not an unboxing video. If you want to know what's in the box, buy one. Then you'll find out what's in the box. But, because that's what's in the box. Copter, radio, cables, props, charger, done. I will say, because uh, it's not in, uh, in the box, but you do have in this box spare nubbies for your radio. They're in there, okay? Um, also, for the longest time when I have purchased DJI systems, I tend to leave the plastic wrapped around the chargers. I don't know, I'm just meticulous about keeping them scratch free and whatever else. I take good care of them because I'm always thinking of resale. You should too, because DJI is not an exception to the rule about turning technology very quickly. You should always be thinking about resale value. Uh, because if you're one of those people that likes to stay abreast, if you will, of latest technology, then you're going to be reselling and reselling and reselling. So I usually leave the plastic on it because then it looks nice. But this one you will want to take off. Different from any other DJI system, once again, they put their heads together. You take the power cable, plug it in here, plug it into your outlet. This goes into the battery or your hub to charge the batteries, and then you would also use the USB port to charge your radio. Guess what? You don't have to do that anymore. They built that cable into the charger. Now you could charge your cell phone from that if you really wanted to. You don't have to have a separate USB mini cable. Brilliant, take the plastic off. Life changing. Okay. Full instruction video, this is where it starts. Before you power anything on, this has got to come off and good luck. Um, what I have found the trick, if there is one, is just one, be very careful. Just treat it carefully. We will carry spares if you need to buy more. And just pry it and come straight up. Just keep it straight up and that is where, that's how you're going to put it back on too. Uh, you're going to come down and keep it straight and wait for those two prongs right here to go in those notches and then you kind of still got to wiggle it back and forth and then it comes on. There's really no easy way of doing it. Good luck. And this is the zoom. I don't want the zoom. I want the pro. So first thing I do is remove the gimbal clamp. Next thing I do, pop out that little plastic bracket that goes in there. Okay, powering it on. Just like all the others, since this down. Okay, powering it on. Press and press and hold, just like everything else, okay? Uh, once you've got this powered on and the app open, uh, it will say at the bottom right, sorry, left-hand side, green RC connected. Uh, if you tab over to the bottom where it says me, you wanna make sure that you are logged in. We've had firmware issues and whatever else. 
Um, and if you are flying in a semi-restrictive area, but uh, you have authorization to fly there, uh, it won't let you click on those and say accept responsibility unless you are logged in. Okay, so with that, now we unfold top ones first. I usually hold on to the motor because it swings or pivots as I swing it out. The other thing I'll tell you is that when you're swinging these bottom ones, I found that this kind of hits it a little bit. So just, you may end up with some scratches on the inside of that arm and right here. Uh, I wouldn't suggest applying a whole lot of torque to pull it away, but I do just slightly pull it away from that body, okay? Um, unlike the previous batteries, instead of an inline, you have got an Xbox formation uh, showing you 75, 100, 75, 50, 25%, okay? So we are going to press and press and hold. The gimbal does a very different dance. It pings to one side and pings to the other side. And in past systems, when the gimbal did that, you thought it was broken and likely it was. That's not the case on this one. It's supposed to do that. Uh, as I've recommended before, don't take off in the grass or power it on in the grass because all the grass uh, and whatever else can poke up on that gimbal and it stops it from being able to calibrate. Powered on from a flat, hard surface. Props. Just like normal, you've got a ring in the middle and no ring in the middle on those props indicating clockwise and counterclockwise. And accordingly, you will have the same thing. Here is a motor with nothing and here is a motor with those rings. Rings on rings, okay? And it just goes push and a quarter turn. I tend to hold on to the prop and twist the motor with my hand. I'll do it on this front one so Jake the camera guy can see it. Push down and twist. That's it. I hold the prop still and just rotate the motor. Locked, or sorry, locked and unlocked. Simple, simple, simple. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to leave them off. When you kick this on, you're, you could get a notice like this that says firmware update. You can touch it and it's going to, you can download it and it will go through that update process. For our purposes, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, on top of doing a firmware, you possibly may get a notice that says you need to update your uh, fly database. It will let you ignore this after so many times, but eventually it is going to ask you, you need to update it. Basically what it's doing is updating different restricted areas, uh, an ambassador's home or national forest or whatever else. Uh, so for our purposes, we're going to ignore that as well. Okay, uh, from there you hit start flight bottom right. Okay, when you initially turn this on, you're going to get this notice about the omnidirectional sensors. You have two forward sensors two rear sensors, one on this side, one on that side, one on the top, and two on the bottom. They've got them all over the place now. Here, we'll look at the Kahneman. Um, these side ones are not going to function as obstacle avoidance unless it is in an auto track slash tripod mode or any of those kind of flight modes that it's in when it's tracking something or it's doing waypoint flying or something like that. If you are flying it manually, it's not gonna do that, okay? Don't show again. Now there are a lot of information. If you've watched any of our full instruction videos, uh, we go pretty in depth, so get comfortable. We'll make it as painless as possible and um, it, we don't go everything, but I hit on all of the important things that I feel you need to know. First things first, up at the top left, you've got a bar that says ready to go vision. That tells me because it's yellow, meaning I can fly it, but it does not have GPS tracking. Now the vision positioning system, that would be the sensors located on the bottom of the craft, are tracking the ground 
So if those are working, then it won't move horizontally. It will track the ground and stay put despite it not having a GPS lock but it's still going to warn you and say, hey, I'm yellow, but I'm just operating off of my vision sensors on the bottom. Regardless, whatever mode it's in, tripod mode, or because uh, the switch is here on the side, uh, the standard P mode or positioning system, position optimization, every sensor that is on this thing will work if it is capable of working, like GPS, we don't have that right now. That's P mode, sport mode, and tripod mode. Sport is fast, tripod is slow. Um, regardless of what mode you are flying in, the barometer is always working. Uh, it will always uh, track its altitude. Roger that. When I touch that bar, it gives me an overall status of everything uh, that this system has to offer. You'll notice I've got a red triangle. Well, that is because I have an update. It's brand new, there's already an update, get that. Uh, there is an update that needs to be done on the aircraft. Moving down flight mode, it says I'm in position optimization, which is exactly what I have it in. That's what the P is. Um, here's a quick shot of set max altitude and distance. I can calibrate the compass. Now, you'll notice on my radio, it says mag interference, and that is why on this screen, it is saying calibrate the compass. I'm not going to calibrate that here. I will do that outside. So here's how you properly compass calibrate or calibrate your compass. Uh, you can go to the status bar at the top left and hit calibrate, hit start. It's going to give you a uh, step-by-step. So you hold the camera out about like this and you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around in a clockwise fashion until these lights go green. Once that happens, the screen will change and tell you to go sideways and then you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around yet again. Wait for those lights to not be green anymore. And if you get a flashing yellow, red, yellow, red, then you need to do it again. If they just go back to their normal green status and you don't get an error, you're ready to fly. Because I've got a lot of metal and whatnot in here, uh, the dungeon that we are filming in, so that's why it's saying that. IMU inertia measurement unit, I will show you how to get to those sensors uh, momentarily. Electronic speed controllers, that's what regulates the RPMs and your controls of the motors. Those are saying that they are working. My remote controller mode, if you're in North America, you're probably flying on mode two. My remote controller battery, 94%. Button customization. Um, you can program C1, C2. I love that I can program bottom auxiliary lighting. Check this out. Boom. Lights. It now has blinding mode for the Mavic. Uh, I will, we're gonna go test this. We're not gonna fly at night, but we'll be close to it because you can fly at 30 minutes after sunset. So we're gonna try and fly as dark as we possibly can, like 20 minutes after sunset, and uh, just see how bright those are. They are bright, they're, they're really bright. And the C1 button, uh, I like to have center focus. Uh, I've, now that we've covered that menu, I'll show what it is, get out of that, and if I push the C1 button, it center focuses. That's the only reason why I like having that circle center point, and I'll show you how to turn that on if you want it, because then I know whatever that circle point is uh, aimed at, that's what it's gonna focus on when I hit my C1 button and it focuses on it. I will say uh, this is far better at auto focusing or tap focus. It's fast. It's way fast way fast, uh, much better than its predecessor, Mavic 1, okay? Uh, from the top left, we're gonna move down just to that little bar right here. You've got green first dot, uh, and this should be yellow, this part between the white dot and the H when you're flying, and then red. Basically, this is going to show you a flight time when you are flying, so it'll say 20 minutes and 16 seconds and start counting down. As you fly further away, this H is going to creep up on this scale because that represents the point of no return, meaning it cannot come home on its own if you choose to fly beyond the H. Can you have the H go past this first level of warning, which is 30% default? Yes, you can. If you fly it 
f far enough, then this will go beyond it. You can choose to fly it past that H. It'll notice will pop up and say, I'm going to go home in five, four, three, two, and unless you cancel it. You can hit cancel and you can bring it home on its own. Uh, this is 30%. Typically, I am landing somewhere in this yellow. I never let it get down into the red because that's when you start battling. Uh, it can't stay in the air. It's got to come down. Uh, that's what that timeline represents, okay? Moving over into this, all of these here represent buttons or options to a menu that you can select. This is going to be very new if you're used to a Mavic Air or any of the other, Ma I'm just going to say Mavic series you will notice that this is a new. Usually it was a dot with some bars. Now it's a dot with bars in front, back, and on the sides. This represents, it's a really cool symbol, represents all of the sensors that the drone has to offer. Front, are they working? Yes, they're green. Back, are they working? Yes, they're green. Sides, no, they are not. They are red, and that is because I am not in an autonomous mode. I'm not tracking an object. I am not in tripod mode or anything else, so those side ones are not working right now. That's what you're going to notice is new about that top one, okay? Um, this is your main controller settings. Tells us we're in position optimization mode. Satellites, I've got three, so I don't. That's why it's yellow. Uh, signal of my radio, think of this as cell service. More bars, the better. HD represents your video transmission system, which is awesome, by the way, Mavic 2, because you are now going to get 1080p up to five miles, okay? That's your video transmission system, my battery, and then this is just a miscellaneous options. Uh, here, because I am in video mode, if I touch that, it goes into stills mode. Uh, I don't have an SD card in here, but it's still going to give me specs based on the eight gigs of storage in the copter, Zoom or Pro. Uh, so that capacity of JPEGs at eight gigs, it will let me take 3,000 plus photos, my ISO, shutter, f-stop, exposure value, and my white balancer all set to auto default for our purposes. I'm gonna go back to video, and now it has ISO, shutter speed, f-stop, exposure value, white balance, and now I've got a 4K at 30, and eight gigs of internal storage is going to give me 11 minutes of recording, which actually for me will serve a long time because I generally don't hit record, take off, and record every ounce of my flying. Uh, get used to using that button all the time it would be my recommendation. Yes, you'll have a lot more clips to go through, but a lot less time of recording, of scrubbing that you're gonna have to go through. Uh, for my purposes, it is a lot easier to edit and you'll make the most of that 11 minutes or any other card that you've got in there. Um, Autofocus or manual focus. If I touch that, manual focus, I've got a wheel and now I can manually focus what it is that I want to focus on and then I can go back to autofocus. If I, so as you move the copter around, it is going to expose for whatever is in the middle. If I find that exposure to be awesome, then I touch my uh, exposure lock and it will lock up to the point of stopping record. So if I hit record, it's going to expose at that. And when I hit record, it didn't unlock that time. Maybe they fixed it because I've had that do that before. It will lock and I can unlock and now it'll expose to whatever is there now. Start, stop, or shutter. So regardless if I'm in video or stills mode, the symbol looks slightly different and it's cropped in and that's because, so we might as well do it. I'm gonna go to these menus right here. If I go to that, that gives me, uh, first up is camera settings for exposures and whatever else. I can adjust my aperture, uh, at least on the Pro. You've got a potential of 2.8 to an 11 that I can expose through on that aperture of the lens. Uh, I can do a shutter priority. So as I adjust the shutter speed, it will adjust uh, the ISO and everything else accordingly, or I can do a full on manual. So here I have adjustment of my ISO, and this is awesome with this new one inch Sony sensor with the Hasselblad lenses and the Hasselblad color built into it. I'll get into that. I have got a sensitivity now. I can go up to 12,800 
if I'm not mistaken, it may be 1600, no, 3000, I think is the furthest I could go on the Mavics. Uh, and now you've got 12,800, it's amazing. Uh, that's full automatic, okay? Or full manual, this is automatic, okay? Now as I go to the right here on this portion, it is going to show me options of stills because I'm in the stills. Watch what happens if I switch to video. Now I have video options. So if you're wondering, oh, I need to change from 2.7K to 4K, and you go into here and you're, ah, oh, I'm not in video mode, I'm in stills mode. So you've got to touch that. And there it is. So now I've got my stills. I'm going to go to a 16 by 9. Now I don't have those brackets that I had before. Uh, image format, working my way down. So we'll, we'll start at photo. Single shot, multiple, auto exposure bracketing, bracketing timed shot, and panoramic. These are all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you watch any of our other full instruction videos, uh, I may go in a little bit deeper, but this is like a eighth generation of Phantom, so, or DJ, eighth generation of GJ, DJ, ugh. Eighth generation of DJI system. So, anyways, image size uh, three by two or sixteen by nine. Image format raw, JPEG or JPEG raw. Pretty simple. Uh, white balance. Uh, you can adjust these differently on time of day. I will say about the auto exposure uh, or the auto white balance. It actually does pretty good. I play very little with these. Uh, mainly, I shoot a lot in in log. I, I like it, and it gives me a little bit more versatility in post and save some of those highlights and stuff like that. But you're welcome to play with some of these on the white balance uh, style. Uh, this is if you want to play with some of these aspects of the photos. I am not perfect in that, so I don't. Color, I have no options because I'm in still mode. There aren't any, but if I go to video mode, so now I've got all these different things and I'm gonna go back to where I left out previous, that color. This is where I could select D-Log, Hybrid Log Gamma, or Normal. You'll notice if I go to Normal, change my uh, codec from an H.264 to the five, or from the five that I had it, if I go to that and I go back into color, uh, I can't select these D log and hybrid log gammas. And it'll give you a notice it wants you to be in H.265. So if you are a professional shooter and you want to get into those, then you need to shoot in the 265 codec and now go back into color. You have hybrid log and D log available. Okay, so now I'll just move up. Uh, style. Uh, same thing that we saw before in the photos, white balance, video format, take your pick, mp4, .mov, I'm an mp4 type of guy. Uh, video size, now this is kind of cool, the zoom will not have this, the zoom is either 4K, 2.7K, or 1080p. The Pro gives us an option of a 4K HQ or a 4K full FOV or field of view. The 4K HQ comes in three flavors, 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. If I go to 4K uh, field of view, it uh, goes out corner to corner for that sensor. Um, it, in HQ, crops it down roughly 30%. My guess is that in HQ, there is less processing because it is pixel for pixel. For me, I'm probably going to prefer shooting in the HQ mode, but if you need a little bit wider, feel free to shoot in that 4K field of view. When you go to 2.7K, you've got those higher frame rates available. 60 and of course at 1080p is now where you've got the 120 frames per second. These are all features. I haven't touched any of these from default. You can turn that histogram on. That's gonna show you if you're overexposed or not in certain areas. Uh, it defaults to the head LEDs. That's these red ones up front. Do you want them to turn off when you snap a picture or record? It defaults to on. I like that. The other feature that I like uh, when it is defaulted is the lock gimbal when capture. Yeah, I'm gonna want it to really hold that gimbal steady when I am capturing a still or whatnot. Uh, scrolling through some of these, this is where you've got a grid and that is where I did my center point, that circle, only I've got several different options. I could do all kinds of different things and I could change the colors even. You used to not be able to do that and that's kinda cool. So now I want blue or do I want yellow? 
I've, I've always been partial to the, the white, but man, that red's just calling out to me a little bit. Um, Anti-flicker, this is with a uh, refresh rate on your screen and stuff like that of your device. I just leave it on auto. Enable AFC mode, this is continuous autofocus basically. Uh, so as you're flying around, I would leave this on. There's a reason why they have it defaulted. It's not going to lock uh, your focus. It, as you're flying around, you're probably going to want it to have that continual focus. Leave it on. Uh, now going back down, anti-flicker. Uh, the next thing uh, that I care about is peaking threshold. I can do normal, low, or high. Uh, this is peaking, fo focus peaking. It's really going to help you as you're shooting. Uh, knowing what is in focus, what is out of focus. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with peaking, does it show up in your baked image? Absolutely not. It is for uh, visual reference only. Okay. Um, no, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, save original photos. This is just totally up to you. Do you want it to save the original panorama or the original hyperlapse? Because when you are done, with the processing, it's when you're done doing a panorama or a hyperlapse, uh, which we're gonna get into later, it will stitch all of those together. Do you want all of those separate individual stitched things? Uh, that hyperlapse is basically just like a like a, a pad of post-its, right? You drew a little stick figure and you threw the ball and then the next page you threw the ball a little further and so on and so on and so on. That's what hyperlapse is. It's taking JPEGs and it's going to stitch those together over a period of time and that is your time lapse. Panorama is the exact same thing. Do you want to save those individual clips or do you want it to just process it and here you go. Uh, storage. Internal storage or memory card. I don't have an SD card in this one. Might as well show you where it's at. It's going to be on this side right there. There's your SD card. Since we're here, opposite of the micro SD card slot is the pairing button. This is where you press it, wait for the light to turn red. If your radio goes into the drink or you lose it or your dog eats it, then you uh, buy a new one and you press this button to pair it with. Okay. Uh, next one up from that is the USB Type-C port. If I can open that. Type-C. No, you cannot charge your batteries through this Type-C. It is simply to transfer the content from the eight gigs of onboard storage into your laptop. And this is of course where you format the SD card or the internal storage. And any camera settings that you have changed, if you don't like them, there's an easy reset button. That is the camera options there. Perfect. Just for the flow of things, we cover that right side stuff. We're going to go over the top stuff, starting with position. This is your main controller settings. Um, home point settings. You've got the standard home point and the stick figure man represents dynamic home point. Basically with dynamic home point, if you enable it, um, it is going to constantly reset the home point based on the location of the radio slash device. Uh, so if you are in a moving object, uh, you took off from here, you got in a golf cart, and you went over there and now you don't want it to go back over there where you started. You want it to go to where you are. Then you have to enable dynamic home point and you have to set that every single time you turn it back on. Every single time you turn it on, it is going to default to the once it hits six satellites, it designates that as its home point. Next is multiple flight modes. Do you want this switch on the side to work? Then you have to enable it. Now you can go into sport mode tripod mode or the standard P mode it'll always be in regardless of what that switch is doing if this is not enabled. Return to home, uh, I would advise uh, from the areas that you're in walking it first. Check out what is the tallest power line, what is the tallest tree, building, whatever. Walk it and get an idea of what the tallest thing is. Based on that walk, you may want to change the default 30 meters, so it will climb to roughly 100 feet before it heads home. Uh, beginner mode, this restricts your height and your distance to 100 feet. You can enable or disable that. Max altitude, it defaults to 120 meters, which happens to be 400 feet, which happens to be the law to stay under within five miles of any airport in the United States of America. Uh, and the max distance, 480 meters. You can change that if you would like to, but keep in mind you must maintain visual contact. 
Advanced settings. This is one that a lot of people ignore. Uh, I am in here quite often. If you don't like some of these settings, your gain sensitivity and all of this stuff, you can change your joystick sensitivity in this menu. But the other thing that I go to is the sensors. Okay, once I touch this, this is your IMU, your inertia measurement unit. Accelerometers, you've got two of them in the system. Two gyros, you've got two of them in the system. Basically how these things work is a little chip with a teeny tiny bubble. Your phone has the same thing and as you rotate your phone, your screen orientates it. It's a digital gyro, okay? This is very similar in how it maintains its level, flattened level status, okay? If these are green and low on the scale, that's good or excellent rather. Uh, if it goes to yellow, then it's good. And if it goes to red, that is poor. If I ever see these in yellows, I don't take the chance. I take the time to calibrate it. When you calibrate it, you're probably going to have to fold in these motors and it's going, to, or the arms while it's powered on, and it's going to tell you, leave it there, flatten level, don't touch it. Count to five or something like that. Put it on its side, leave it, don't touch it. Put it on this side, leave it, don't touch it. Tail, even upside down. What it's basically doing is putting it extremes and saying these are sides up down, and this is upside down, and it's reteaching it what is flat and level, and hopefully these will then go down. The next tab that you've got is a compass. It's got one compass, and as I mentioned before, we've got a compass area down in error, down in this area. So yes, it's going to be red. This is a duplicate place where you can do a calibrate compass just like we did in the status bar that was over there. It's worth it to look at these sensors, take 30 seconds and just glance at these sensors before you take off. It's just worth it. It's not a cheap copter, it's awesome. It's not a flawless system though. Uh, take 30 seconds, look at these sensors, make sure you're golden. Uh, the other feature that I'm going to highlight in here is that default on all DJI systems, if it loses radio control signal, after three seconds, if it doesn't regain that connection, it comes home. You now can change that. If you don't want it to come home, you can change it to hover or landing. Brilliant. I like hover. Um... And the other option that they've given you with the new Mavic 2 series is in an emergency. When you go to power it on as that down and inward, in fact, let's show you down and inward, it turns on the motor. Man, they are so quiet. They are so, I'm still amazed. I'm still amazed. They're quiet. That same motion, you can change. Do you want it in emergencies only? or do you want to use that CSC maneuver and it gives you a little bit of a description there at the bottom. You can change it if you would like. Now that we've covered that, I'm gonna go back into it and you're gonna notice as I touch it, all of these same symbols are the exact same symbols that we found up at the top. So you can touch any one of these or you can touch any one of these and then just navigate to the tabs uh, accordingly. We're gonna work our way down. Sensors. This is where I'm going to turn on and off all of these uh, obstacle sensors and the radar chart. The radar chart, the radar chart is just going to give you proximity and show you feet. So if we enable that here and I go out, look, it is seeing this four feet away and it's seeing that four feet away. For me, I love that they give us a chance to turn this display chart on and off for the radars. I think they clutter it and it kind of confuses me. So I go back into here and I turn it off. I love that I can turn it off. Uh, bottom auxiliary lighting, I can say it's on auto or I can turn them on all the time during the entire flight. I have yet to test how much this is going to decrease the battery. It will some. I don't know if significantly because LEDs pull very little power. Okay. We're going to turn that off. And advanced settings, there are all kinds of descriptions in there uh, to know what those do. They all default to on. I haven't touched these. Moving on to the radio. Radio, while this is powered off, if you need to calibrate these sticks, if these are not, when you're not touching them, uh, flat and level and, and straight up and down, when this is powered off, you can do a calibration. Stick mode, you can change it from mode one, mode two, mode three, or do a I should just show you. You can do it in mode one, mode two, mode three, 
or custom if you would like. Remote control LCD screen introduction. If you use this, I use this very little. Really the only thing that I use it for is the status that it's reading to me. If you forget what any of that stuff is, you can touch that uh, screen introduction and there you go. There's the legend of all its glory. Charging mode, this is awesome. You can now, and on some of the other systems you have, but I don't think it's available on all of them, you can choose to charge your phone. I believe it will do it automatically if your phone gets down to 40%, but if you want, you can turn it automatically. Here it goes. Did you hear that? I don't know if you heard that. Bling. It's now charging my phone from the radio. Awesome. And this is a bigger battery that's in this radio. It will last longer than any of the other Mavic series. Uh, button customization, I already kind of talked about that. This is where you would do that to change it from C1, C, the change the C1, C2 buttons, center autofocus and bottom auxiliary lighting. If I touch those, you can see all the different available options. I commonly have used the camera forward and down uh, or the advanced camera settings as well. And, uh, and of course the center autofocus, I like that one as well. Uh, you can also customize the five point button that is on uh, the radio itself. I've got this to camera forward up and down and decrease exposure or increase exposure value. And of course, as I mentioned before, if you have to buy a new radio or somehow this becomes unlinked, at the bottom of that radio menu is where you are going to link those radios. So you will touch this button. It'll start counting down from 60. At that point, you would push that button that I showed you earlier. Onto HD mode. Truthfully, I don't touch this a whole lot. Um, I let it operate on the dual. This is one of the advantages to OcuSync 2.0. It bounces automatically between 2.4 and 5, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies. Um, by having dual, it's going to bounce between the two, giving you whatever range or signal is best. Same thing with the channels. You can custom put these into whatever channel, 13, 14, 15, whatever you want. Just leave it in auto. Let it do its job for you. It's awesome. Um, image transmission settings. Um, the image transition. Honey, I'm, I'm shooting. I'm, I'm screen mirroring. Can I, can I call you back, babes? And the principal just called me and. Did he go to the principal's office? Um, he wants me to teach kindergarten half day. <laughs> of course they do. Cause you're amazing. Can we talk? Yeah, like, well, yes, yes, well yes. you were, you were going to go into it. I love you. Bye. Bye. Guess what? That gave me a good opportunity to notice that I'm at 20%. So we're going to charge mode. Use that since I've got 81% on this one still. Okay. Go back to HD mode. Uh, where were we? <laughs> Image transmission settings. Uh, this is where you can change it from normal mode to HD mode. That is one of the advantages. You can leave it in 1080p if you want to. I would suggest saving battery life on your phone and or your radio by leaving it in normal mode if you're flying with a phone. If you get a tablet, that might be a better time to use HD mode, but your phone, because it's such a small screen, your eyes may not be able to tell the difference anyways between 1080p and 720. I don't know, you be the judge. Batteries, we have gone from a three cell to a four cell battery. This is where you can change your critical levels You've got uh, default, that first dot, 10%, and the second dot that we saw on that timeline at 30%. You can change those, be as generous or ungenerous as you choose to be. Smart return to home. If you want that on, it will, aircraft will return when battery is, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my brain around that though. Is that different? It is, it's totally different from signal connection loss. You've never been able to toggle this on and off. I don't know. I've got a spark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I hope that I hope it picks that up. That was funny. I've got a spark. I don't have these options. Smart return home. It defaults to on. You can toggle that on or off if you want to. That's that H on that timeline. When it hits that, do you want it to come home? Perfect, moving on. The next thing on this screen that I really care about uh, is your voltage on the main screen. I like to enable this, so if I go back out, 
I now have this 4.04 volts. What that is doing, so if I touch my battery and go back, slide up, that is giving me an average of the, the voltage of the cells, okay? Why do I care about that? As I am flying and battery power decreases, so is my voltage output. And you may see it go down to like 3.8, 3.7, uh, as it approaches that like 25, 20% level, when it gets down to 3.6, 3.5 or less, I start to get really nervous while it's flying. Now this is supposed to fly in lower temperatures. If I remember the specs correctly, it's negative 10 degrees Celsius, uh, which is roughly, I think, 15 or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so this has a better operating range temperature-wise outside than the previous Mavic predecessors. However, that doesn't, it's still a lithium polymer battery. It's still vulnerable to extreme heat and extreme cold conditions. A good sign that your battery is cold or too hot, the voltage output drops. So if I'm in the middle of the summer or in the middle of the winter, I absolutely watch this voltage. If I see it get down, below 3.7, 3.6, and especially 3.5, then I can real quickly touch it and I can look at the battery's temperature. I can't, I wish they would allow me to take that temperature and put it on the main screen, but they don't. But the other way to do it is, that's not it. The other way to do it is to enable your voltage. Moving on to gimbal settings, the default is follow, but you can put it in FPV mode. Basically, this is like Superman mode, as I call it. It locks the gimbal and it flies it like in a uh, fixed wing aircraft, okay? I put it in follow, uh, meaning it stabilizes and follows it around, okay? Advanced settings, this is where you can change uh, your wheels, the sensitivity of how much you want it to move speed-wise, and the smoothness, basically the buffer. Do you want it to be an abrupt start or a uh, soft, smooth start, okay? And what is also awesome about the Mavic 2, you could look up on all of the drones, but you had to enable it. This is default, I haven't changed it. It defaults to turning up 30 degrees and based on where this gimbal is looking, this gives you a much better distance looking up without obstructing it with the body or the props. General settings, this is where you can change from imperial to metric and so on. So this is also where you're going to choose the live broadcast platform. Attach a rose to the drone. Fly it over to your girlfriend's house with visual line of sight, of course. And tell her to come outside, be the creeper. Or, or rather, tell her to go into your YouTube channel and you could live broadcast. She opens the door, there it is, there's a rose. I don't know, you can choose whether you wanna put all that in there. This is where you can choose to do the live broadcast mode. Facebook, YouTube, Weibo, yada, yada, yada. Uh, just make sure you've got a good connection. If you're not on Wi-Fi, it's gonna use cellular service to do that. Uh, if you don't have free data, and the other thing that I care about on this screen of general settings is all the way to the bottom, the maximum video cache capacity. It starts caching a lot of this information. If you are experiencing that the DJI Go4 app is taking up a lot of space, this is where you can clear that cache, okay? And as basic, if you're familiar with any of the other systems, then this will all look familiar to you. No, we're not in a body of water. We just don't have GPS signal. Distance, height, Horizontal speed, that's your velocity. Vertical speed, so as I pick this up, it's going to give me an up arrow and tell me how fast I'm climbing or descending. My vision positioning system, those are the ultrasonic sensors and camera sensors on the bottom. These will roughly be similar. This is going to be measured from the barometer. This is going to be measured from uh, ultrasonic, okay? And then there is my play button down on that side. I can review stills and video while it is flying, okay? Um, got all that done, okay, left side. Now, the only note that I'll make of importance, really, is to note that there is a difference between these two buttons. Now, it's saying up because it's on the ground. If I touch this and then slide, so if I touch this, you'll have to cut that out. 
I slide to take off and it will start up the props and hover to about four feet. When I do that, when I do that, this up arrow becomes a down arrow and this will no longer be darkened. It's enabled because it's in flight. There is a difference between return to go home and just land or auto land. If I auto land, wherever it's at, it's gonna come straight down. If I enable this one or push that same symbol on the left side of the radio, then it will return to home. So I have this, I have the, I have this happen with customers all the time. They confuse the buttons, and even though the drone could be 10 feet away from where it took off, and they didn't push this button, they push this button. And what happens? Where it's at, it goes up 100 feet, moves the 10 feet, and then slowly comes down. And oftentimes, it will hit something on the way up. Well, hopefully with these top sensors, it doesn't do that anymore, but I'm just making a note these are different. With that, here's the important stuff. Those are intelligent flight modes. The next symbol on here is the A-Pass or the Advanced Pilot Assistant System. You can enable this or disable this. Basically what happens, if this is an object and you are either auto tracking or manually flying forward or whatever else, as you fly forward up to 50 feet in advance to that object, it starts seeing it. And if you wanna watch me try and hit Jake the camera guy, with a Mavic Air, then you can watch the Mavic Air full instruction video. It's hilarious, but it's accurate. We tested it with a tennis court net and a chain link fence. It approaches it and goes around it. They've made this even better. We're gonna try something new here. I wanna thank Jerry with Sennheiser for sending us these cool Ambio Smart headset. I'm wearing earbuds and on either side of these earbuds is a microphone. So I've got stereo audio here. That's the audio that you're hearing. I'm just recording it on my voice memo app. And of course I'm using the Mavic 2 Pro instead of a camera on a tripod. So APAS or Advanced Pilot Assistance System. Uh, better than before and its predecessors, instead of stopping when it sees an obstacle, it hunts for uh, external space or empty space and will attempt to go above, around, to the side, or below in some cases, as you'll see. Let's take a look and this is how it is. Now with that APAS system, or APAS, they also improved the auto track ability for the Mavic 2. I've got a pretty tight corridor down through here, so I'm gonna do auto track and we'll see how it does. I'm gonna turn on APAS and I'm going to go into Intelligent flight modes, that's the radio symbol on the left hand side. Auto track. I'm going to tap me, it sees me, there's a green dot there. And it's going, so here we go, let's see how it does. Well, it stopped. I think I've got to bring it down a little bit. Let's see how it does now, is it going to fall? Wow, it dropped down really kind of low oh my heavens i am not doing that oh my heavens is it really gonna do that come on you can do it it's still following me through this tree you gonna come over this way you gonna come over this way oh my gosh Look at that! Under the tree! Under the tree and out! Oh my gosh! Let's go this way. Is it still following? It's still following me! Let's go through. Here's another tight corridor. Let's see if it makes it through here. Under this tree? Are you gonna do it? You gonna do it? Oh my gosh, through the tree? Oh my gosh. No! Come on, get real. You've got to be kidding me. No, no freaking way it just did that. 
That's insane. You guys have to look at what it just went through. Stop recording. Okay, I've stopped auto track. I'm gonna put it in normal mode now so that you guys can see what this just went through. Turn it around here. It just flew through that. I'm gonna fly it manually. No, I'm not, I don't trust it. That's way too narrow. I can't believe that. There, I'll move it side to side so you can kind of see how many trees and bushes. It just went through that and the other corridor, okay, I'm gonna stop recording so we can go over to the other side and you can see what it went over there. Okay, and there's the first one that it went through. It didn't quite make it through this gap of this tree. It stopped and it, I walked around this way and it came through right there under that tree but over those big piles of bushes and twigs that is crazy and and i'm over here this is it just went it just went through this that is absolutely remarkable so auto track absolutely amazing that just blows my mind Okay, that is full instruction for you. Regardless whether you were using a Mavic 2 Zoom or a Mavic 2 Pro, everything that we went over, 99% uh, of that applies to both of those. Hit that subscribe button. It's probably around here somewhere. Uh, there are additional videos and we thank you for watching. If you've got questions or concerns, you are welcome to shoot me an email at jamesb at tvspec.com. I'm James with TVRS Pro. Good luck and happy flying.